It hasn't happened a lot, but on a few occasions, someone will ask me, how did both of my boys get drafted in the NHL? What did they do growing up? I figured if they were interested, maybe you'd be interested too. So here we go. The first thing that has to happen to start this whole process is the player has to have a real passion for the sport. You can easily tell who these young hockey hopefuls are by observing them playing knee hockey or pond hockey. They will play for hours, week after week, never getting tired of it. Once I knew my boys were into it, I started to create hockey learning environments where they could get extra repetitions that not every hockey player will take advantage of. And over a player's entire career, this could add up to thousands of additional training hours. This included a spot in our basement for stick handling, passing, and shooting. I also created a similar setup at our lake place for summer training. And finally, I was the rink manager of the Pitluck Pond for close to 20 years. Both of my boys began skating around four to five years old. They started with a learn to skate program at our local rink, and the following year transitioned to the community-based association for winter hockey. At the age of seven, they began playing spring and fall AAA hockey, where they'd get an additional 60 to 70 hours of practice time, as well as some games and tournaments. From the middle of June till the middle of August, there was no skating. Only off ice stick handling, passing and shooting or roller hockey. We would have four day weekends up at the lake during this window, time to get away from the game for a bit. So often hockey parents live separate lives during the season, especially if you have more than one kid playing and if one parent is a coach, which was the case for me and my family. So summers at the lake was where we reconnected. That was our routine for around 15 years. Fall would roll around and the boys would start their winter association team season. Lots of pond hockey in between practices and games. Then spring AAA hockey would begin a week or two after the winter season ended. The grand finale was a tournament in Winnipeg the second week in June. Then a two month break with no ice. When we started back up mid-August, we'd skate twice a week, 45 minutes of skills, 45 minutes of scrimmage time. It was very low key. All we were trying to do is get them prepared for tryouts. Over the years, they've worked with technical skating instructors and also on ice skills coaches. But I'd say the place where they logged the most hours trying to get better at hockey was in our spaces at home and at the lake working on their stick skills. From age seven to 16 years old, most weeks they were getting four to six hours of stick and puck work in addition to their team practices and games. By the time a player gets to their later teenage years, everyone can skate well. Sure, there's always a couple kids that are super talented skaters, but most are around the same level. The players that truly separate themselves from others are the ones who can do magical things with a stick and puck. You wanna possess the puck better in high traffic areas, consistently make tape to tape passes, or gain more confidence shooting the puck? Well, you have to stick handle, pass, and shoot more pucks than others are willing to do. And the great thing is, is that the hockey gods can't tell the difference between an on or an off ice rep. They're just a rep. My kids bought into this early on, had success a couple months later on their investment into themselves and began separating themselves from others their age. When they realized this, the off ice training became a habit. In order for players to reach the higher levels in hockey, there's an army of people that help players along the way. Moms and dads, coaches, teammates, managers, specialty coaches, doctors, chiropractors, and athletic trainers, rink manager, the list goes on and on. This journey wasn't meant to be traveled alone. So this video doesn't get too long. Here's a few other tips I can offer you. Number one, my kids always had sharp skates. I ended up just buying a sharpener and that thing paid for itself several times over the years. Number two, around the age of 10 for both of my boys, hockey was the only organized sport they played but I still considered them multi-sport athletes because of all the activities they enjoyed at our lake place, working on balance, body control, agility, and overall athleticism. Number three, around the age of 14, nutrition started to become more important and they started educating themselves on the importance of eating the proper foods to optimize performance. Number four, both of my boys were undersized till they were 18 years old and finally hit their growth spurt. For many years, they were in survival mode once checking started. If there's one thing that gives a smaller player big time confidence is their stick handling ability. Eyes are up way more and you'll take some glancing blows but rarely any big hits. The path isn't special or glamorous. It requires the right guidance paired with a player's determination and work ethic. If you have those ingredients, you got a chance to achieve some amazing things in hockey. So I think that's a wrap for this video. 
I hope you got some useful information on my boy's journey. If you have any additional questions, you can always email me at coachlance at onlinehockeytraining.com. Please proceed to the next video.